have a couple conclusion slides uh, I'd like to share. Um, sort of bringing all of this excellent information um, over the last two months, uh, part one and today's part two, um, bringing some of this down to a way that uh, we can think about educational programs for our eventual clients, whether they're other technical service providers, um, university county agents, consultants, or um, farmers, ranchers, producers themselves. So we found that uh, with mortality composting practice in general that uh, demonstrations and field days have certainly been the best way to teach this information. Um, we've had a long going demonstration here in Montana. Um, I've currently or most recently been hearing about an excellent demonstration project that's gone on in Nebraska over the last several months and certainly um, this is a way to uh, teach this practice in a very hands-on and observational way. Um, otherwise, I uh, wanted to point to a variety of resources that help um, you all as educators and consultants um, provide education and assistance on this, uh, certainly building workshops around uh, materials that are available from the Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center or your local land grant are important. Um, but also incorporating multimedia aspects to um, your mortality compost education programs is quite helpful, and I'm going to point you towards those resources in a moment. In summary, um, the selling points of this practice, uh, when done right, we see little to no odor. We see a reduction um, in scavenger or predator attraction relative to other types of burial um, or um, mortality disposal methods, uh, and honestly, we say reduced in any of our case studies that we've had here in the state of Montana where we do have some significant scavenger and predator issues. Um, we've not had one case of coyotes, wolves, bears, etc., being attracted to a mortality compost facility. Mortality composting can be done usually with existing equipment on an operation. Uh, and over, over burying and uh, preparing to uh, send away from the farm or ranch, uh, there's certainly reduced labor in composting. Catastrophic mortality can be managed with composting. Um, range mortalities that may be the result of severe weather, um, lightning, etc. cetera, um, these mortalities can often be composted in place if uh, you're not in a position or your clients are not in a position to move them. So consider this uh, uh, for that type of emergency. And composting may be ideal for some small acreage properties that uh, would not be able to, to bury, uh, would not have an option to export a mortality from, from the small acreage farm. And then finally, and apropos of our most recent presentation, um, this can lower the risk of um, uh, pathogen viability in the pile um, and certainly lower the risk of disease transmission. As far as the reality check, this does require a carbon source. Some carbon sources are better than others, and that actually is related to a, a discussion going on over here in the sidebar on regionally available and relevant carbon materials. Um, so we might try and touch on that in a minute. Though it's low management, mortality composting is not management free, so keep that in mind. Um, relative to, once again, pathogens, um, the cause of a mortality or death uh, could limit the use of this practice. And then finally, um, you know, I think there is limited land application potential um, Certainly, we uh, would not recommend that mortality compost be exported, um, say, with another type of commercially viable compost. Um, finally, as, as educators, as consultants, as technical advisors, it's our job to uh, provide the facts on uh, this and other practices and then let the producers decide. On the home page for today's particular webcast, all of these final uh, recommended resources are listed. Our YouTube channel is there, uh, which has a variety of um, 
very useful videos and uh, video FAQs. And if you click on playlists and then uh, search FAQs on animal mortality management and you get quite a few videos there. Finally, you don't have to uh, capture these links right now. All of these are on the, the home page and the archive page of today's webcast. Proceedings from the last Waste to Worth conference in Denver, three mortality presentations, and then our original 2010 mortality webcast, which was more of the basic overview, whereas this year's 2014 series was uh, delving a little deeper into the science. Finally, there's some um, materials available to help run your own education problem, uh, programs via Colorado State University and a project I engaged with them on. Um, you'll find that link on the homepage of this webcast as well. And then once again, I'd like to point to the Cornell Waste Management Institute, um, of which Mary, our first speaker today, represents. <laughs>